Well, this week's prophetic perspective is all about how to look at situations like voting and politics in a place of biblical and spiritual faith. We have to look at these things with spiritual eyes and not just natural eyes, because in our natural man or woman, we're going to want to vote a certain way based on issues or causes or the things that are the most important to us. If you look at the top three things that are important to most evangelical Christians, it would be things like anti-abortion laws. It would be things like LGBTQ plus issues. It would be whatever it is, whatever the hot topics. If you look at the most liberal issues for liberal Christians, it would be things like gun control. And it could be pro-choice laws. It could be whatever else it is. But as we're approaching uh, upcoming American elections, especially, but it's for elections in whatever country you're from, we have to look at, at our approach for voting and our, make our decisions with a biblical perspective. We have to look at what God's doing in the world around us, and we have to bring alignment in our own faith to what he wants to do. And sometimes we don't even vote because we don't think our vote matters. I live in California, so it would have been easy to, as a conservative to not vote because the majority of the, I can't win. I mean, the majority of things that I'm voting for, there's I'm it's dominated by the population of uh, progressives. So I could have just disengaged, but there's part of me that was like, realized voting is a spiritual act, just like prayer is a spiritual act. Voting is a place to align my faith with what God wants. And even though I may not win this election, I'm voting for the transformation of culture I believe God wants to do in the future. And too often we get caught up in the noise of the issues. And what noise? We allow this overshadowing of the more deeper spiritual discernment that we need to truly make informed choices with. And I wanna encourage you in this prophetic perspective to look beyond the surface of the headlines and look beyond the surface of maybe your political party. It's not just about who seems to align with your preferred issues, but it's about discerning who would truly be best for your issue. But maybe it's a nation or maybe it's a people group, maybe it's a region and looking with eyes of faith. And sometimes we're prayerfully looking at people and we just vote because we're mad at this uh, contender. We're mad at this person. I know right now we have Biden and Trump. It's really easy to be mad at Trump for the offenses that he's made in the past. It's really easy to be mad at Biden uh, for the, all the things that aren't happening right now. So it's hard to look at it from a, a perspective of what spiritually we can discern biblically. And so we need to see God's guidance for wisdom and pray for clarity and understanding. But we also have to consider the candidates before us Again, biblically. So we're going to look at that in just a minute. Are we voting based on policy points and party lines? Or are we seeking to really align our choices with God's heart and his plan for our country or for our region or state, whatever it is that you're voting for? And this particular election for 2024 in America is a critical moment for believers really to rise up and let our vo votes reflect the commitment to these biblical principles and our values. And this is huge because Christians right now could win whoever they vote for, because there's so many of us. And yet Christians are the ones that vote the least in America. We see we see this time and time again where churches don't get involved on a political level because we're afraid. Christians don't get involved because we feel like it's not, there's a separation between church and state. We're not supposed to do that. But the reality is if you're a citizen, you're supposed to care about what's happening in the world around you, whether it's on a school board or a national election. And we want to take time to pray and reflect and vote every time because these honor God. They honor the vision God has for our nation. And God wants to share something with you in the context of you being obedient to be a citizen of the country you're in, to be able to really stand for something, to stand for his kingdom. And I want to look at Donald Trump because he's running an office and then we'll look at Biden. And this topic stirs a lot of emotions. I believe it's really important for us as Christians though, to look, again, through a lens of faith, but we want to consider some of the good points that Christians can align with regarding Trump and his policies. Because we look at the bad stuff. We can look at some of the things that happened early in his first uh, uh, running for office and some of the, the terrible videos and some of the stuff that's happening recently with the legal issues. And we can look at that. But we also got to look at some of the things that would happen if he was put into office. And one of the first things that would happen is pro-life advocacy. We'd win a lot of pro-life issues. And that's huge because millions of unborn babies are dying every day because people don't understand the issue of life. And we're getting more and more science that's backing up uh, that these children that are in the womb are children, are people, they're not just fetuses. And we're getting more and more science to understand children's rights in the womb, not just women's rights about this. And so Trump's administration was marked when he was in office by a strong pro-life centric policy. You know, he had he appointed three Supreme Court justices also who contributed to overturning the Roe versus Wade. And that was a significant milestone for the pro-life movement. That's huge. I, I do want to mention that he did elect three. I and mean, he was one of the first presidents to do this. Three different people in the Supreme Court who are all conservative and have made some really big strides for Christianity to protect freedom of religion. Now, there's also been some terrible things the Supreme Court has done. It's not all good. But again, when you're voting, you're not voting for everything to be peachy, peaches and cream. We don't live in heaven yet. But what can we do that helps us to have a measure of things like what my next point, religious freedom? 
on the earth. And Trump has been one of the biggest vocal advocates for religious freedom, both domestically, but also internationally. And his administration really has taken steps to protect the rights of specifically Christians, but also other religious groups, ensuring that we can practice our faith without government interference. This is huge because he started to really help the laws that were formed to protect churches and to protect our rights. He helped them to be uh, um, adjudicated. And so he helped them to stay front and center. And there's been so much before and after moments for when Trump was in office for Christianity and our nation, which also affects other religions as well. And I'm so proud of that part of his office and his term for those four years. And what he's bringing to the table again, he was at the NRB conference recently, which is the National Religious Broadcasters Organization. He was the keynote speaker and he shared with leaders from all over Christian media and said, I will be your strongest ally. I will support you. I will fight for you. And he has a proven track record of doing it for those four years, plus the time between that election and the, that term and now. So that's a huge one. Another one that we really got to look at is the support for Israel, because Trump had an unwavering support for Israel, even meeting with Israel and leaders in the Middle East over and over, and including moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. We can't forget that, which resonated with many Christians, but it really resonated with Israel as well. We have never had a greater friend than President Trump. Seeing Israel's well-being as biblically significant. I mean, having a president who believes that, Joe Biden doesn't believe that Israel is biblically significant, but he does believe that they're significant as a partner to our nation. I don't think he understands the, the full ramifications of why, but that's a, that's a huge one. There's no other person in modern history who's fought so much as a president as President Trump has. And so I think that's been huge. Again, judicial appointments, we talked about that, the appointment of conservative judges who've upheld constitutional values that we believe are important has been a major point of support. And these judges are seen as protecting religious liberties and ensuring that biblical values have a place in a legal landscape, which is, which is wild. I do want to say before we go on, I want to talk about Joe Biden as well. But before we go on, I, we're proudly sponsored by Nutramatics. If you haven't heard of them and you're looking for high quality natural supplements, or if you've heard of them and now's the time to get them, I want to encourage you, if you need your health and well-being supported, go to Nutramedics. This is an incredible sponsor. They are tried and true for decades in their industry, in their field. Doctors have trusted them so much and they're now even more released to the public, which is great. They were working with so many medical groups, and but it's so easy to get them, especially in this day and age online. And their products are crafted with a lot of care. They're going to help you live your best life for real. And as a special offer to our listeners, you can get, this is cool, an exclusive 20% off discount if you order by using our code BOLS at checkout. So visit Nutramedics.com and enter the code B-O-L-Z, and it's going to be a fantastic discount. Don't miss the opportunity. If you need supplements, if you need something for a disease you're struggling with that's a supplement, or you just need vitamins, I'm going to encourage you, go to Nutramedics, get help from them now. Let someone you know, who has their expertise give you, supplement you in your life right now. Okay, here we go. So to people who really appreciate Trump, they think he, he embodies resilience and determination. And this has been considered then you know, people who are not pro-Trump believe that they're delusional. But the problem with listening to Trump supporters today versus four years ago is how many of them have become delusional. And, and Trump is saying that people who hate him are struggling from a delusional Trump syndrome. People who believe that Trump could be good for a nation, which is right now is the majority of our nation, um, are oftentimes villainized by mainstream media. MSM, mainstream media, is like going after, going after uh, anybody who even says Trump could be good for our nation, for our economy or for immigration issues or whatever else. But his tenacity and determination is actually feeling really encouraging right now when he hasn't changed his position, even from the 80s. When you look at what he was standing and representing in the 80s, when Oprah asked him, would you ever become president? The same things he was saying then he's saying now, whereas we've watched other politicians who are running for office flip flop so many times that they're, it's exhausting. It's exhausting to watch him. And this quality really inspires a lot of Christians and a lot of a lot of patriots right now, which is you know, his commitment to his promises, which has been really wild. And when we look at the detrimental stuff, one of the things we have to look at is Trump is facing several legal challenges, including his investigations, his business practices, and his 34 felonies. And these legal, legal battles were undoubtedly impact his campaign to some degree, but they could also shape public perception of him. And right now it's been working for him as opposed to against him. But he has so many endorsements of people who are saying they don't believe that Biden's weaponization of the uh, D D Department of Justice and also these, you know, the New York justice system 
it merits uh, him not being able to run because this feels like a banana republic to a lot of people. It feels like something that just feels inordinate, especially when Biden's facing his own son's case with who just got convicted of felonies, and yet it's not even made the mainstream news. And for things that whole organizations were taking off of Twitter and Meta for even saying was happening, why Trump was running against Biden the first time, they were actually penalized to the point where they were removed from their social media platforms and deplatformed because they were speaking the truth. And so this has caused a lack of trust towards the Democrats. It's caused a lack of trust towards mainstream media. Mainstream media is an all-time low of trust. And then you look at someone like Trump, and he's been who he's been, and he is who he is in all these conversations. And so that's been confusing to a lot of people who are saying, why do you like Trump so much? Well, Trump hasn't flip-flopped. He's been the same person all along. He's been pretty honest with the issues, and he's moved on from a lot of the, the stuff he's done as a younger businessman into a place where he is now. And he's been, you know, consistent family man, these kinds of things. Then we look at Biden and we're going to talk about Biden for a minute. Now, the things that many Christians who are pro-Trump look at with Biden when they see he's more unbiblical in their minds, the number one thing is that his support for abortion rights has become a significant concern for Christians. I mean, he's so strong in his abortion rights. He, he would go all the way to full term if he could. His administration has worked to expand access to abortion services, and then do many pro-life policies, especially even things that Supreme Court has just ruled. I mean, his, his, he has personally said, I don't agree with Supreme Court. I don't think that they should be able to rule this. Send me a Congress that supports the right to choose. I promise you, I'll restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land again. So he's standing against our judicial system as well many times, even though he's saying, well, what New York decided against Trump, we should trust our judicial system. And yet he's been a little flip floppy because he doesn't trust our Supreme Court system. And he said it over and over for several cases, not just uh, about uh, abortion. And I share the public outrage at this extremist court is committed to moving America backwards with fewer rights, less autonomy. And so this stance is in direct opposition to our biblical belief and sanctity of life for most Christians. Another thing that Christians have a hard time with Biden is his restriction on religious freedom. And his administration has taken steps that a lot of us view that are infringing on religious freedoms. For instance, policies requiring religious organizations to comply with mandates that go against their beliefs, such as providing insurance coverage for contraception and gender transition procedures, which we don't feel we should ever do. And these are seen as a direct challenge to religious liberties. And then the third big one is the LGBTQ+, especially when it comes to converting to another gender policies that the Biden administration has actively promoted, not just their rights, but letting people have their rights is much different than fighting for them to be included on a higher level than your average citizen. And the way that it's been promoted isn't just to give people the right to be able to choose their own freedom, whatever they want to be, but it's also infringing on the rights of others who don't agree. And that's where most Christians are having a hard time. There's many Christians who are saying, if you believe that you're gay, we're not going to fight you on that. That's not our battle. We're going to fight when that when that right for you to believe you're gay is going to take rights away from my children, how they're educated, how they're, there's medical services. I had to go to the doctor this week on uh, Monday to, because my daughter went in the emergency room. Thank God she's okay. Thank you for praying if you pray. And uh, we didn't know what was going on. And at three in the morning, after all the stuff that we went through, all the tests and everything else, it was an incredible group. Love the hospital. They did a great job. But they asked a lot of questions. And they asked almost like a social services where they did this. I don't, it was so bizarre. It was so DI woke. It was so bizarre where they asked all these questions. Are you concerned about if you go home right now that you won't have enough food to eat? And um, are you concerned that you don't have enough money for groceries or to keep your lights on, your utilities? Is your daughter, uh, does she identify with her gender? So you said she's female. What are her pronouns? And I told them, like, I'm not going to, you're not my social services. And we came in here for a medical issue and we have insurance and we don't need to answer all these questions because she's a female and we're here for this medical issue. We're not here for all of that. We don't need your help on any of that. So please don't ask me those questions. And I'm sure I got written up for, you know, I mean, I was very nice about it. Too late, because I'm already writing a rap. But I'm sure I got written up for like, he's not being compliant with our hospital, all their risk management stuff that they have to cover their bases. And this is the kind of thing that's entered into our structures for insurance, for schools, for hospitals, because of someone like Biden who's been elected, who's included so much that doesn't apply to the majority. It applies to a small minority of people, whether it has to do with extreme poverty, whether it has to do with, uh, LGBTQ plus issues and gender issues, whatever it is, he's whether it has to do with races, like they literally looked at me and said, what race are you? I'm like, the human race. I've told you I'm white. What else do you need? And like, are you any Hispanic? I'm like, why? That's even more racist than, than not asking the question. Like, it's so bizarre to me that people are, they're put in this position because when someone furthers the division of America like Biden has, 
that creates issues. Again, you can hear where I'm coming from. But regardless, you know, Christians have believed he's undermined a biblical teaching on marriage and gender and the Equality Act aims to prevent discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity, but it also raises concerns about religious organizations being forced to act against their beliefs, especially when it comes to foster care or when it comes to adoption. And that's a huge deal that Christians may not be able to adopt uh, in a way that actually they can express their family beliefs because of the extremes of this this kind of thing that's come forward. And the last thing would be education policies that Biden has support for comprehensive sex education in schools, which includes teaching all kinds of things that the average family doesn't want to hear about with their children at the age of kindergarten on, especially kindergarten or early elementary, We're talking about gender identity and pronouns and all these things. And many Christians uh, see this as promoting values that are contradictory to biblical teachings. And this approach to education undermines parental rights and the ability to impart Christian values to their children. So we can talk about international policies and those kinds of things, but those are the things that a lot of Christians look at this and go, well, if I'm going to vote, it's hard to vote for somebody. I might look at Trump's personal character and be like offended at him. But as far as his policies, he didn't challenge my right to be a Christian by being in office. And so we have to look at these. When we looked as a team, I had several people, several friends look at Biden with me and say, what has Biden done for Christianity to move Christianity forward? And what has Biden done to move our country forward? I can do that for Obama. I cannot do that for Joe Biden. I couldn't find anything that Joe Biden has done that has moved our country forward when it looks it takes immigration, economy, schools, human rights, any of these things. There's nothing as far as a biblical conviction that he's moved our, our life forward. We're getting pulled backwards. So normally I'd be more neutral and say, here's Joe Biden's five things. Here's Trump's five things. I couldn't do it. You might be able to do it, though, and you need to do that. If you're going to vote for Biden, you have to discern what are the areas that I can stand in my biblical and spiritual convictions that he's doing right. And it can't be one issue. It has to be a number of things that build a well-rounded person that you're saying, if I vote for him, I'm voting with a healthy, clean conscience. And if you can't do that, you're in trouble. But I also want to hear from you if there's things that I'm missing, because I'm sure because of... Uh, Maybe my sentimentality for what could happen through Trump. I'm not seeing what Biden has brought for us when it comes to a Christian worldview, but we couldn't find it. We, we Several people who liked Biden in the first term before he was elected, they were saying they voted for Biden. They can no longer vote for him with a clean conscience, just like many celebrities and actors, entertainers, and also politicians. We've had a lot of Democrats who are switching sides right now. Even people like Julian from The Biggest Loser, who's one of the coaches, who's a lesbian, who's a very, who's been a Democrat who's been a pretty extreme laughter. She said, I never moved in my positions, but my party moved so far that I'm moving out of California and I have to vote with my conscience towards Trump. That's a huge statement from somebody who is a lesbian, who has a black son, a Jewish mother, an Arab father, who would vote majority Democrat, but because of what Biden's doing, things have changed. So when you have people who are looking at things, you know, black and white issues right now over America, you got to vote again with your conscience. So I'm telling you how I looked at the situations. You may not look at it in the same way, and this may be a very narrow viewpoint to you, but how are you looking at biblically? That's a better question, whether you agree with me or not. How are you looking at it? If you do agree with me, have you looked through these things and really, really thought it through, really prayed it through and said, God, I'm going to vote, and my vote is a prayer that you would bring realignment and bring a pendulum swing to America because we see the contrast between these two leaders. We see the contrast in our Christian values, but are we praying in a way and are we participating in a way where we're saying not just like, I hope this goes away so this can come forward, but I hope that Jesus could be expressed in our generation, and I hope that family is honored again for what God's original intention was, and I hope that we can bring true justice because people are suffering in the ju judicial system. I hope God will bring a solution, I pray that God will bring a solution to immigration because the rule, the, the, the good thing wouldn't be just to build a wall and stop immigration. The thing would be to bring the people who would be right for our nation into our nation who need the asylum, who need the help. And right now it's not being handled correctly because of the political agenda behind it. So we need to be praying. We have to be vigilant in our prayers and we have to do things out of an action of prayer, like voting, not just vote because we're a citizen. And so I guess I'll vote now. We have to do it out of a spirit of conviction. And if this registers with you, make sure to leave a comment below. I want to hear from you and I want to have a conversation about this. And again, I'm open for certain areas that I'm believing to be challenged. And, and you might challenge me in certain ways. I am not like the uh, Trump ride or die person where I'm going to die for Trump's life to be elected. And if he's elected, everything will be fixed. That's not how I feel. I would die for Riley. Oh, I am looking at this next four years as a course correction for what has just happened in the extremes of America. And I know that Trump could do that if he gets elected. And I'm really hoping for that. He could be one of the one of the answers of many answers. But the better answer is you on your local front 
being a Christian, you being on a school board, you being somebody who's engaged in issues that you care about, like issues of immigrants who've already come through, and what do we do with them? Instead of complaining or instead of inaction or instead of just saying, I'm praying about that, but not really praying, let's do something about it. And I believe you will, because I believe you're an amazing audience. So I'll talk to you soon.